right. Should we just leave our pet poo in public? That's so crazy! Oh. It's a dog debate, dog world, right here on Cross Balls. Comedians posing as experts. Hot is good for everyone. Women are designed for sex. Hunting is self-defense. I drive drunk all the time. Debating real people. I'm it not gay. totally immoral. You don't know the show is fake. That's a lie. You're an idiot. Die. Out of the crossfire, beyond hardball. This is Crossballs. I'm Chris Tallman. Tonight's topic, animals in America. Hunters are slaughtering Bambi with their semi-automatics, but bears, tigers, and pit bulls are biting back. First up, we have the head of gnawing issues, former vegan turned hunter Andrew Fortson. Also, here's an independent animal rights activist, Darren Edwards. Thank you for being with us. Question of the day. The number of vegetarians in the U.S. has more than doubled in the last 20 years. Why? Darren, let's start with you. Because eating meat in this country is not necessary. Really? Therefore, meat is immoral. Andrew, how do you respond? Well, uh, when I listen to uh, Darren speak here, it's, uh, I feel like I'm hearing myself from a few years ago. Believe it or not, I used to also be, I was a vegan. I was a member of the cult of veganism, and that's how I feel about it, that it really is a cult. So I've got something for you. This is, you know what this is? It's beef jerky. Yeah. By the time I'm done talking and you have heard everything I have to say, if you open right. your ears and listen, Straight. you're going to eat this. You're going to want to eat this. I swear to God you are. I swear to God you are. Draw you're going to want to eat Mr. this. Mr. Fortune has brought with him some visual aids to demonstrate your theory on vegetarianism. Now let's take a look at this. This first picture, this is a picture of me before I ever got into veganism. That's a girl I was running around with and we were having a good time. This is when you were still eating meat, correct? Yep. Having a real good time. All right. And now this next picture, I was on the vegan diet for three months and <laughs> I'm serious now, I'm serious. I had not eaten meat for three months at the time that this was taken. Now, my point is that I was exhausted. I was tired all the time. I, ne I hardly ever got off that couch that you see me on there. So that's that's a fact, all right? Increased brain activity amongst people that eat meat. Uh, humanity has evolved. We've to evolved. evolved. You're right. Yes. I'm How did we evolve? By eating meat. We no, evolved by eating is, meat we, and our brain. There's no, reason for every, there's no reason to wear leather or fur or anything. There's alternatives in this country, country. in Europe. I'll tell you what, I no look better than you. I look better than you. No, I'll stop. That. That is, all right, all right, that all is right. a matter of individual taste. Right. When I was a vegan and when I was eating uh, only vegetables and grains and all that kind of stuff, I found that my, my brain was not as sharp. I was losing some of my mental acuity, and I found that my energy was very low, and I was... Uh, you're still not doing too well on this one. Now, now, watch it. Now, all you're doing here is yell, 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 because you don't have the brain power and the logic to back no, me up. Because you're <laughs> Meat is very important, especially for children. Now, what is the definition of a child, right? Someone who is growing and going to school sure. and learning, all right? And a child needs needs that protein. No, There's don't. a thing called pro Ow, protein. Man, he does. Man, he does. Protein. Protein. Let Let protein. Let him give a chance protein to grow. Forgive me. I'm going to put in a little bit of a plug for something that I am working on. Huh? All right. Now, hang on. All right. Now, it would be perfect if every child could have uh, sausage and bacon every morning for breakfast. They can't. That is difficult. All right. Oh. I am working on a breakfast cereal called Meteors. <laughs> M-E-A-T. <laughs> What is your response to, to that idea? What is your response to more protein in a cup of beans than a steak, right? If you eat get just cake bags, it is. Here. It is no cup of our gentlemen. Next issue. How am I going to get him to eat the jerky? I'm not going to eat the stuff. I'm going to stop. Animals, 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 the number, let me go. <laughs> The number of hunting licenses sold in the United States has been dropping consistently every year. Now, is it time we gave up hunting altogether? Andrew? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Hunting, <laughs> hunting is self-defense. We need to have self-defense. Now, seriously, seriously, here in the state of California, these people know better than most people all across the country. There are mountain lions that are attacking people. People need to have guns on them at all times. The day of the animals is coming, is my point. And the vegetarians are only conceding defeat to the animals. And we, what? We, uh, vegetarians are conceding defeat defeat. Animals don't like us. Animals do not like us. How many attacks do there have to be on people from we supposed animals to be civilized. We, understand? we don't poop animals are our friends. Our animals yes, are our friends. Are. Our animals are yes, our friends. They are. are you going to eat this? Right. If they... All right, stop it now. <laughs> what about, what about the, 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 the tiger in, in Las Vegas? Yeah, no, that's very serious. You're right about that. You, I'm sure you heard about that. This uh, a tiger attacked the great magician Roy of Siegfried and Roy. Right. Now, a lot of people laugh at that because they think that Roy was gay and whatever, and they find it very no, funny and it's all... No, 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 no. And very no. ha-ha-ha. No, no, no. People aren't laughing at... People don't 
it's funny because uh, he's, he I've heard he's, well, he's allegedly gay also. They're doing it to make money. The guys are millionaires. That's what they're doing. And a lion and a tiger took his natural instinct and attacked. Yeah. Right, how do you respond to that? Man is the dominant species on the planet, and animals had their chance, and they blew it, and we are the dominant species. And so, yes, so yes, for animals today, they are either on the dinner plate or they're in the zoo or in the circus, and they've got to adapt to that new reality, and that's the reality of the planet. That is we don't do all these other things that animals do. We don't poop in public. We don't have sex in public. We're supposed to be really? civilized. So we shouldn't be... <laughs> Let's move on. Let's get into the quick balls round. Animals should be off limits to hunters. Quick balls, go, Andrew. Animals that uh, that uh, that help hunters, basically, I would say, could, could, should not be hunted. Hunting dogs and horses that you ride while hunting, I suppose. <laughs> All right. Rebound to you, what Darren. Is... Every animal, leave them alone. They have a right to live. They have a basic right to have their freedom. There's no reason to kill them. He Absolute believes it should rubbish. be every animal. Right. Bounce back on to you, animals, animals left. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you about an argument I just got in yesterday with a woman who allows her cat to wander all around the neighborhood. I think a, a cat like that wanders around the neighborhood is fair game for wheel hunting, and it's whoa, not a bad whoa, idea. Whoa, whoa, what is wheel hunting? Wheel hunting is when you hit, hit it with your car, I'm telling you, because you can't. Whoa, we supposed to be civilized. Listen, every cat that you need to punish my point no, about cats. No, my point was on the rebound. What do you what know? Is you know? Listen, what you you what is your point about cats? Explain every, that. Every time you kill a cat, you are saving about 100 birds, and those... <laughs> That. that is ridiculous. And you are birds. absolutely wrong. Birds make for good hunting. Next up, an animal rescuer who's trying to protect pets from their owners. I get passionate about we it. I apologize. You get stupid about it. Stay tuned. Tonight's topic, where is the line between pet ownership and pet worship? Joining us now is the head of the pet rescue organization, Animals Domain, Mary Daniels, and the outreach director for CARE, a no-kill sanctuary for homeless animals, Joanna Patrice. Burning issue. 10 to 12 million animals are euthanized every year in the United States. What can we do to counteract this horrifying trend? Joanna, let's start with you. Well, the first thing that we have to do is spay and neuter. It's absolutely crucial. And then you must educate the public as well because many people give up their animals and they don't have I'm, to. I'm very alarmed when I hear people talk about neutering and spaying. Why? Uh, neutering is no better than abortion. And to, <laughs> to neuter or spay an animal against its will is a violation of that animal. We well, have no right. What do you suggest we do get a written contract with them so that they can spay and neuter what's your, what's your reaction oh, to that? You know what? That is over the top. Right, I want to get into this a little bit. I want to know why is it you are so against, I mean, obviously for the, for the health issues, but is that it? Well, for another example is, I don't know if many people know this, but something like the Breeders' Cup, you know? That's sort of the Olympics to dogs, you know? And, and you cannot be in the Breeders' Cup if, if you are fixed. That's so... So, well, wait a minute. That is so... Spaying or neutering an animal is the equivalent of chopping off an Olympic runner's leg. Oh, you are ruining please. that dog's potential please, to, to, to please, excel. Please. Joanne, is that true? <laughs> Absolutely not. The dogs don't enjoy being in the shows. They want to be fun. They want to play. They want to be playing. They want to be. They also want their genitals. They also want their genitals. They don't care. All right, we got to move on. I'm sorry, we're going to cut you off. Moving ahead. Both of these organizations work to help homeless pets. How do animal shelters protect pets from going to bad owners? Joanna, let's start with you. Well, we have a questionnaire, and it's a three-page questionnaire. We have, oh, close to 300 homeless cats and dogs right now. Right. And they're all living happily in a cage-free, no-kill sanctuary because some of them are older and crippled. This and dog, shit. this dog that I was dog sitting for a period of time, you can take a dog biscuit and throw it in a cage, and the dog will run <laughs> in, and you can close the cage behind. It. You can do it every day, and you can leave him in there for hours and hours and hours, and he oh, falls for it every time. <laughs> he always falls, runs in. Stop, My point is that the what dogs are stupid. They don't care what kind of house they live in. They don't care what goes on. We know on what that you house. think. We're moving on, Mary. I want to get your That's response. What is, you, what is your What is your response? You know, Three-page questionnaire. That's a start. You have to fill out more paperwork for internet dates, okay? I connect potential roommates. That's what I do. And I do a really, really thorough background check on each and every person. And I make sure, A, that they uh, do not work, that they do not have a job, that they will be... Wait, they don't have a job? Look, Chris, a lot of these animals have been abandoned. They need constant companionship. They need positive reinforcement. They need affection. So these people cannot have jobs. Many of these people that have jobs that have to work for a living. They have people that come to the house and play with the dogs. Yeah, they strangers. Walk the dogs. Strangers. No, and do you do a background strangers. check on these they're people that come in? Do you do a background check Absolutely. on these crack addicts that come in three times a week? Or these teenage girls that bring Wait a young a boy over oh, and have sex in front of that oh, animal? Oh, 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 oh
she's sitting on my side. Right. She's really, really I'm sorry. Sick. I get passionate about we, it. I apologize. No, you get stupid about it. We no, do not. Not we don't need to get nasty about it. Shut up. We don't need to get nasty about this. Now, what about when you've got all these animals you say, and you're very specific with these guidelines, what happens to the animals that you don't place right away? Well, um, I can only have uh, so many animals in my uh, home at one time. And uh, the larger ones, um, if necessary, I can, I can set them free in the wild. Uh, some of the smaller ones um, may die. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so, well, I assume you're sending them to, like, dog heaven or something? Is that what you're talking about? Um, it's not called dog heaven. <laughs> it's called Canaan Idiot. It's called what? Canaan Idiot. And let me tell, let me tell you something. If, right? if a dog could figure out how to put a man to sleep, he would do it. <laughs> what? Right uh, so. Are you going to be all right? I'm fine, I'm fine. Should a dog always be kept on a leash? Yes, for their own protection, because right. it's not the Garden of Eden. You know, we have traffic. Mary, so what's your take on leash protection. laws? I hate the idea of restraining a dog. I hate the idea. Yeah, I knew you'd if, say that. Oh, isn't that interesting? Well, if I am forced, <laughs> if I am forced to use a leash, which, yes, I am, then I use a dual harness. What's that? A dual harness is um, a collar for the animal and a collar for me. What? I, I am not... What? Why is that so crazy? It, it, it doesn't restrain either person. Nobody's following. Nobody's leading. The animal is, for once, allowed to go where it wants to, and it's still safe. I mean, one time I spent a half an hour in the garbage, but you know what? That's where my dog wanted to go. All right, let's move on. Next issue. Where is the line between animal rights and human rights? Now, Ms. Daniels, you've been doing some very unorthodox work in your community to change laws concerning animals in public. Now, let's take a look at some of that footage. Watch the screen. Do you pick up after your dog? I do. I'm trying to make the, uh, the city change its code so that we are not responsible and having to treat our pets like chores and humiliate them by picking up after their poo. They don't do it in France, and yet we do it here in the States. I just think it's an archaic practice, and I think it's humiliating to our dogs. Hmm. Can I just... Maybe... I actually, I'm totally for picking him up. I think it's the responsible dog owner thing to do. And if you've ever stepped in dog <laughs> you know that it's not pleasant for the animals. Well, that's why I'm, I'm handing out protective booties called duty booties. So in the worst case scenario, you're still protected on your shoes. It biodegrades, it decomposes down, and basically becomes fertilizer for, for nature. So it's not, it's not something toxic that ruins the environment. Can I talk to you for a second about dog droppings? Do I look like the kind of guy that likes to get into conversation about dog? I say <laughs> Pick it up. No! Oh, the dog, pick that baby up. No! Stop being so lazy. You're trying to tell me that because I stop and pick up my dog droppings, that my dog feels bad? Feels insulted? That's Are what I'm saying. Crazy? So we don't have to treat our dogs like chores. Hey, listen, this is what they do in France. Exactly. That's what I've been telling everybody. I lived everybody. there for five years, and it's just like, hey, you know? Do you know that in France, they don't require anybody to pick up after their dog? What happens in France? France is a backwards country. <laughs> Should people not be forced to pick up their dog's droppings? Joanna, let's begin with oh, you. Yeah, I mean, absolutely people should pick up their dog droppings. It's a, it's a perfectly you know natural is? process, and they're not humiliated by it at all. You, oh, you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, be humiliated. you wouldn't be humiliated if somebody came along and played with your poop after you dumped one? They wouldn't, oh, come on. they wouldn't have a chance to do it. Next up, animal testing, cruelty to creatures or protection for people. You can let your animals at home test products. Stick around. Now via satellite is a doctor of pathology specializing in animal uses research and the author of the book, The Moron's Guide to Animal Testing, Dr. Jerry Dennis. Tough topic. Does animal testing still belong in our society? Doctor. Well, Chris, I believe that mandatory testing on animals for everything that we use, all products. Um, I call it my anti-cruelty to humans campaign. And in my book, I have examples on how you can let your animals at home test products. Well, I for one, yes, well, I for one only use products that have been tested on animals. That's the only thing that I can trust. Like, for, for example, I don't eat chocolate anymore because it made my dog surprisingly sick. <laughs> and, well, you know, and I submit to anybody that's on that panel and any of the people that are there, um, you know, if we don't test on animals, then what will we test these products on? Ethiopians? Uh, homeless oh. people? You know? 
I'm for humans first. Dr. Dennis has documented one of his tests to show what we can learn from testing products on animals. Let's take a look at that. This is a new brand of shaving cream on the market. Now, before I taped over the label for legal purposes, I didn't see any mention of it being tested on animals. Now, obviously, shaving cream is dangerous. It goes around the mouth, which a lot of people keep open for a better shaving angle. And what's our motto? Better safe than sorry. Better doggy than me. <laughs> right, Stella? Good dog. Step number one, disguise the taste of the product. Now, dogs might be dumb, but they won't eat shaving cream on their own. Luckily, there's some tastes that dogs can't resist. So what I'm going to do is put the shaving cream in between two strips of bacon. That'll do the trick. Step two, administer feeding. Here you go, girl. There you go. That's like a champ, yeah. She's chowing it down like a trooper. So ever do that. That is, uh, that's, re that's repulsive. I think that you are a very stupid man, first of all. Well, there she goes back the stupid again. Right? Yeah, you go around and rescue animals. Any nut can do that. <laughs> We're not here to make attacks on each other. Now, Dr. Dennis, back she up that video. Me. She said Why? I'm stupid. What? She's stupid. I'm a scientist. I, I, no, yes, I, I, Paul, I, I stop. I'll tell, tell you, stupid things. is a dog that would eat a handful of shaving cream. Now, that is stupid. All right, now, that is stupid. Exactly. The person who, who calls himself a scientist is no better than Dr. Mengele at Auschwitz. All right, that's a, very that's a very serious allegation. You guys focus on the negative. negative. All you think about is how the animals are getting hurt. You know, they're, they're lucky, too. Would you rather be a rabbit that gets eaten by an eagle or get to strut around in makeup all day? You know? <laughs> I'd rather be a rabbit than a rabbit. That's a good one. For every one rabbit that, that's eyes are burning from air conditioner, there's nine oh, rabbits please. whose fur looks fantastic. <laughs> these shows are giving us <laughs> rabbits are suffering. And we all know they're suffering. Aren't you just treating these animals just like test subjects? I mean, you, 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 no, you, you're... No, that's what you're, they are to him. Uh, no, they're not. They're not just... Uh, they're, they're my co-workers. These animals are heroes. That monkey that got shot out in the space and that got left out there. Can you that imagine that? He's a hero right now. Let's Nobody talk about that. Right. Folks, I got to cut you off. We are running out of time. I just want to say that, you know, I test all the products that uh, my animals use for them. Um, I don't let my dogs eat any food or use any dog shampoo until I've used it. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Next up is animal That's cross different. breeding out of control. More cross balls when we return. <laughs> cats and the dogs will breed together. They will create cats and pugs. Does free speech protect this? I look at Janet Jackson as the new Rosa Parks. Seriously. Really? <laughs> In fact, she's better than Rosa Parks because I never got to see Rosa Parks. Welcome back, animals in America. Pure bread or pure dread? We're almost out of time. It's time for Foul Ball, where we take a look at something that's completely out of bounds. With us now via satellite is Matthias Leek, German Shepherd enthusiast and breeder. Mr. Leek's organization has accused American German Shepherd owners of weakening the breed. Tell America a little about that. Well, Chris, it is time to return the German to the German Shepherd. Uh, the German Shepherd was born to stand proud, stand firm, and it did at first, but unfortunately, American German Shepherd owners, they tend to cuddle their pets, to baby them, and to uh, basically humiliate them. Uh, I have gotten many photos from the internet, such as this one. As you can see, Americans tend to put sunglasses and floppy hats, bandanas even. All sorts of dogs have the bandanas. And it's, it's humiliating, and not for a German Shepherd. Is that sort of thing a real problem, Joanna? When it comes to breeders, I Ooh. think breeding should be outlawed. Really? And he's yeah. still out yeah. there breeding. He's go living in another pound. planet. Yes, I am. Mr. Because Lee, go to the pound is full of German shepherds. Well, it's those German shepherds are weak, and they've probably run away from the owners because they Not were tired all. of being humiliated. Not at all. The German shepherds are the best breed in the world, and really the only breed that we need. They're wonderful, but we need we need to stop. Wait, hang on. I want to find out what, what did you stop say? Stop breeding. Mr. Stop Lee. breeding. Mr. Lee, what did you say? I will continue to breed as long as you make the German Shepherds weak here in I'm saying you think we got a program where you're talking about doing an exchange German Shepherds for people who don't want their dogs, and what is that? Yes, we well, we have many German Shepherds, and if, if you have a mutt, we encourage you. We will trade, you tr give us your mutt, and we will give you a German Shepherd, and you will have a <laughs> better dog. And what would you do with the mutt? Excuse me? What would you do with the mutt? We, we send it to a puppy farm. What? Just to the puppy farm. <laughs> puppy farm? Puppy 
<laughs> what happens at the puppy farm, sir? They live happy lives. <laughs> Mr. Lee has actually brought with him a video. He actually shows this video to the dogs he breeds. Take a look at this. German Shepherds. Nothing truly great on this earth has ruled for a millennia, having been forged in mere days. Unstrong you have become. Naturally loyal, intelligent, protective. You are the purebred, elegant and noble. Stand proud. Do not mar your bloodlines with impurities of the mongrels. A dog that does not protect its racial purity will perish. All hail the mighty German Shepherd. Mr. Leak, that seems like a Nazi Absolutely. propaganda film. It implies that we should eliminate mixed breeds. I don't appreciate being called a Nazi. We are very sensitive about that. The film is to instill pride in the German Shepherd. You need to be proud of your the German, German Shepherd. Doesn't care. He just wants a nice little life. He you just said nice he doesn't life. care. He wants he to just become... admitted that animals don't care. Are you going to no, eat the jerky? I'm sorry. <laughs> In Reno, crime doesn't. Well, he is an ally of mine. This is this is a Japanese spaniel, and we are in alliance, and we will beat the mongrel dogs because they are weak and impure. Ah, oh, don't oh, 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 oh. He's he's not even Japanese. He's a redhead. <laughs> Chris, please, I'm not German either, but we. What? Did you say I'm from a